Hi there, I'm John, I'm the Living Landscapes Coordinator for Essex Wildlife Trust and this is my daughter Harriet. Hi! We're out in the garden today because uh, we're going to talk about wildlife gardening and some of the actions that everyone could take to make their gardens and spaces a little bit wilder to make more space for nature. Now I realise that uh, not everyone will have access to a garden. Some of you may have patios or decks, uh, courtyards um, or even a balcony. It doesn't matter anything that you can do to make more space for nature in uh, in the area that you have available will be a real benefit we don't need everyone to try and create mini nature reserves in their garden what you're really looking for is uh, a wildlife service station where uh, wild wild animals um, can stop off and uh, meet some of their needs for shelter water and food and you can help to provide that Okay, Harriet, you ready to go on a little journey around the garden? Yeah. Let's go. Now, we've only lived here for a couple of years, so you're joining us relatively early in our journey to try and make the garden a bit better for wildlife. One of the first things that you can really do is actually start by doing a little bit less. Um, there's no need to mow every inch of your garden if you've got lots of grass. Something that you could do is try leaving some areas a bit longer and uncut. Uh, and see what comes up. Now this is around one of our apple trees um, and uh, it did get an early cut this year but it's been left ever since and we've had lots of things coming up. Haven't we? Mm -hmm. so, um, last year this was all just long grass but this year we've had lots of lovely violets coming through. Uh, there's some dandelions and daisies and we're going to now leave that uncut for the rest of the summer um, so it can provide some additional uh, habitat in the garden. Now with the current lockdown and the suspension of garden waste collections across the county, this is a really good time to consider letting um, parts of your garden grow a little wilder, leaving the grass grow longer in some areas, or creating log or brush piles with some of your cuttings. You could also consider making a compost heap if you've got space, because that can also be great cover for wildlife, particularly through the winter months. Now over here under that tra Harriet's trampoline, um, we've also left the grass uncut. It was a pain to cut anyway, so it's a multiple benefit for the wildlife and for me. While it's in the shade at different times of the day, it's alive with insects, um, particularly when the sun's out, and it was left uncut over the winter to provide much needed cover. Now, allowing an area of longer grass to remain over winter provides shelter for insects, and having access to emerging insects, which have spent the winter as an egg or pupa in the long grass, will help the birds um, bring the birds into good condition in the spring ready for their breeding season. The dog has uh, rather helpfully started digging some holes under the trampoline um, but it's not all bad I'm not particularly worried it's created some bare ground and the bees were particularly interested last week. Now we don't let the whole lawn grow long as with Harriet and the dog there needs to be room to play and it's an absolute nightmare clearing up after a dog in long grass. However, once the daisies and the dandelions start to show through, as they are just now, I just set the mower a little bit higher so that we don't cut off the flower heads when they're in flower and the bees go absolutely mad for them on a nice sunny day. Now when we moved into the house it was enclosed on both sides by tall Elandi hedges that really took up a lot of space and blocked out a lot of light. Now I hate Elandi hedges with a passion, however they do have a function, don't they Harriet? Yep. What's been nesting in this one? Um, blackbirds, robins and pigeons. And they can be a bit noisy can't they? Every morning. And they do like to poo on the trampoline. Yeah, which is what you do. Now this hedge got a cut in uh, February, which is a really good time to cut hedges and bushes if you have to. It means that you've left the fruit over winter, um, but you're not disturbing the uh, birds when they're looking for uh, breeding sites. Now over on the other side of the garden, I've removed the old Leylandi hedge and dug out the roots. Not something I'd recommend for the faint-hearted. And in its place, um, we've planted a mixed native hedge for wildlife. Now this is in double rows um, to make the hedge thicker and it was planted in November. 
and uh, so far it's coming on really well. Now, Harriet, can you remember what we planted uh, in um, the hedge? We've got hawthorn, hornbeam, hazel and crab apples. That's right. Uh, we've also got some field maple, plum, spindle uh, and common pear. So lots of different species that as the hedge bushes out, there'll be both cover and uh, food for the birds and the insects. And we've also planted around the front some... Do you remember what it is? Cowslip. Cowslips, very good. Yeah, at the base, while the hedge is developing, we've uh, planted a few cowslips for uh, sort of instant appeal. But we've also spread quite a lot of wildflower seed at the base and we'll see what comes up over the next few weeks. Another thing you can do around your garden is to think about putting up some nest boxes for the birds. Uh, now this is one we put up about a year ago, uh, I think it's courtesy of the RSPB. Um, and uh, what have we seen coming in and out of it recently Harriet? Um, blue tits and great tits. We did have the blue tips and then the purple moved out and the grey tips came That's right, we think the blue tits um, kind of got uh, muscled out by the great tits, but it's lovely to see them going in and out and uh, let's hope they have a successful brood in there. We've also got um, four bird boxes out of the front. One bird box contains three compartments and the other I made up cups. And in the back garden we've also got the bird feeder and the pigeons sometimes knock into it and the poo falls on the ground and then they eat it. Cheeky. Cheeky pigeons, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Now this is one of the uh, other trees that we've just let go wild around the base. We've got lots of uh, nice dead nettles uh, and other things coming through. Uh, what we do have at the moment, I don't know if you can see it, The bee fly. No, it's not going to play ball. Now I know that um, digging a, a pond doesn't always mean that you need to dig a hole in your garden and fill it with water, as we have the dog and we can't do it yet. We've got a trough and we sometimes see leeches in there. That's right, we haven't quite decided where we're going to put a pond in our garden. Now if you've got the space, having a wildlife pond is one of the best things you can do to attract wildlife to your garden. And as Harriet said, we've not got that far, so this is a trough we bought from our old house. Now it's not ideal for amphibians because it's so high off the ground and it's got really steep sides. Um, but um, what we have put in there for now is uh, something I rescued from uh, uh, my mother's pond, I think it was. Um, it's an old waterfall feature, but we've put it in the uh, inside the trough so that if any animals do fall in, they've got a way of climbing out. And we've let the grass grow a bit freely around. We have, yeah. Let the grass grow a bit longer and a bit wilder. And there's even a bit of bare ground and lots of shelter underneath the uh, shed, which is slowly rotting away. Now that's about all we've got time for for now. We'll uh, carry on with our journey into wildlife gardening and wilder gardens next week. Um, in the meantime, um, if you've got any pictures you'd like to post on Twitter, Facebook or Instagram, then uh, make sure you tag Essex Wildlife Trust and you could use the hashtag Wilder Gardens. Um, we'll see what we can come up with over the coming weeks, but if you can't wait for that, then uh, have a look at the website. There's a great actions page with a whole list suite of actions that you can take in your gardens uh, to make a bit more space for wildlife. So uh, until next time, um, stay safe. And stay wild. Get out in your gardens. Absolutely. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye bye.